You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today you get to do a little bit of a deep dive into leadership lessons. So if you're trying to figure out a better way to lead in your business or in your life, or you just want some wise counsel, Mike McGraw is here to give you some insights. You're really going to enjoy the conversation. And I'll see you on the other side. Good morning. I see a Christmas tree. So now everybody knows we're recording this at the end of 2023 when Mike and I are on the short rows of our presidencies in Florida and North Carolina. And Barbara, by the way, thank you for letting Mike use your office. She's across the street getting ready for her installation. I'm sorry, realtor prom. It is realtor prom. I love them. It's my favorite part of hanging out with volunteers because you do all this unpaid work and it's kind of nice to be celebrated. And I didn't understand that until I started volunteering. And so many of these members who volunteer really don't know what they're getting into. They see the glitz and the glamour and the prom, and then they jump in here and get to where they have to work. And they're like, wow. And the good ones learn that it's a good experience. The other ones are kind of like, really, we got to work? I thought we just got a free trip and a steak dinner and our picture taken. Mm. Yeah, you got to handle budgets and finances and HR and... Strategic planning. But do you really handle that? Because let's be honest, almost every realtor association makes a strap plan and then it sits on the shelf for three years until they need another strap plan, which has got to stop. We've got to see people actually rely on it as guardrails, but that's a whole different rabbit trail for a whole different day. My pen I get it. Great today. Have we well, officially started? Oh yeah, I record the whole time. That's the best part. People get to see the whole conversation. <laughs> I mean, we're realtors. Our best conversations happen in hallways. And frankly, I don't know what happens in the men's room, but a lot of conversations happen in the ladies' room where we discuss things while we're washing our hands. And I don't know what happens in the men's room. Do they discuss realtor politics? And We don't. Men's room? No, no, that's a violation of man code, <laughs> man law. We don't go there. We don't talk to each other. We don't look at each other, nothing. Do you know, I have had people pass me their business card under the stall wall before and then send me referrals. It's the no. strange situation ever. <laughs> violation of man law. We don't go there. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm going to be gracious. I'm not going to name the realtor who actually did that and then sent me a piece of business because we didn't want to tell the client either. It felt weird, but... We were having a great conversation. <laughs> so, so you know where I'm at right now? I do. I'm in Lakeland. I'm from Orlando. Lakeland's about an hour just south of Orlando. And I'm sitting in their AE's office, which is Barbara Barnes. And she is a huge University of Georgia fan. And that's what I say. Yeah. My whole family is Bulldogs. My whole family is. Because my stepdaughter graduated from there. And I told her that I was going to show up and I was going to disgrace her. Don't even go there. Um, can I just go ahead and chop oh, that geez. down? Go Knowles. How y'all doing right now? We've been cheated and robbed of our opportunity. And I'm just going to say that the letter that Senator Rick Scott wrote to the NCAA about this travesty that has been thrust upon Florida State was my favorite senator's letter I've ever read. He was straight fire and I was very proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I've got a prop for the back. There's Uga and there's Albert. So Yeah, and so where's Chief Osceola and Renegade? I think you're playing favorites as I am. a, a real I am. Although here, since I graduated from Carolina, I do say ugly things about other schools in North Carolina too. That's just mine are the best. My two are the best. I get it. So we can talk about anything we want on the podcast and obviously Being the president of the largest trade association state in the planet, would you have, as of this time of recording, 242,000 members in Florida? What number are you at? 241, 242. And we have 57,000 in North Carolina, which makes us the sixth biggest association, but that's a long way from one to six. So we can talk about being president, or you could talk about the fact that you are still a producing realtor who works with buyers and sellers, or the fact that you're an investor, or you can talk about the growth of Orlando. What you want to talk about, Mike? Let's talk about just being president. Let's go there. Okay. So obviously it's a job that a lot of people aspire to, and you've already alluded earlier, they don't really necessarily know what they're getting into. And right now, of course, we're in 
quickly expanding litigious environment in organized real estate simply because lawyers are greedy. Let's just call that what it is. Yeah. But not knowing any of that was going to happen didn't mean we could step away at a time when we need to be in communication with the everyday practicing realtor. So all that being said, in this 12-month period of your presidency, but more importantly, in the 12 months leading up to it as president-elect, and then the time prior to that on your leadership line, you can give one lesson learned, just one. And I know that you have more than one, but narrow it down. What's the one thing you wish the everyday realtor knew? So the person you run into in Publix who is buying their coffee and they run into you and you see they got a realtor R on, they don't even know Florida realtors exist. What's the one thing they should know about your time in leadership? Our members need to learn how to tell their story, their value proposition. With all the lawsuits going on, why should a consumer pay us? Whether it's a seller or buyer. You've been doing this a long time. So somebody asks you, hey, Mike, how come you charge X? Why do you charge that? What's your answer to them? My job is to navigate. My job is to be the weather channel when the hurricane comes on shore. Because the weather channel is not in Florida. Their studios are, what, Atlanta, New York? And I'm in Orlando as a storm's coming to the coast because we get hurricanes. And they're up there saying, oh, by the way, here's the map. And the storm is going to hit Westford Drive, which is my street, in seven minutes. Hunker down. But they're in a studio two or three states away watching the whole storm that I'm going through. So the way I relate that is I'm in the studio watching you navigate your real estate transaction that maybe we may not be in a storm. But what happens when that buyer calls you and says, I can't get homeowner's insurance because the hot water heater is too old. And in Florida, the roof's too old. I don't live in a huge house. And my roof this week that got put on my house is $33,000. My house is only 2,100 square feet. Is that a metal roof? Are you talking no. like normal architectural shingles? It's architectural shingles. It is a steep roof. And then I've got a 500 square foot back porch under roof and an oversized garage. You don't have some cool custom house that looks like a castle that would cause a nope. 30000 Nope. It's very normal. $33,000. And Lee, my bids were thirty one. dollars to 38. So you bring up rooftops and the insurance, which is, it's really boiling right now. And I don't think most of our realtors realize what kind of a crisis is right ahead of us on the insurance front, because they're still facing the crises of interest rates and inventory. Insurance is going to be wild. So in North Carolina, of course, we have exposure to hurricanes as well with the coast. And we have the mudslides in the mountains, and we have tornadoes, and we have it all. We're very lucky here. Right. The insurance agents in one of our counties have said a roof that's more than four years old is not something they can cover. So one of my members is in a flat panic because to her, it's not just the money, it's the how in the world is that ever sustainable? Because now you're taking asphalt shingles and they're going to go into a landfill after four years when the roof itself is officially, according to the warranty and the paperwork, a 30-year roof that the insurance company says, I don't care if it says 30 years. If it's not four years old, we're not covering it. So we're at the front of a new storm. So to your point, I'm watching what's happening in California with insurance, which is the worst of all scenarios. You're probably the second worst in Florida. And we're catching a different storm in North Carolina. We don't know what's happening in Ohio and Indiana because everybody's got a different crisis they're facing. So maybe this too plays into the value of a realtor becomes actually the value of the realtor paying attention is the ability to guide people through whatever new crisis comes up. And it's kind of painful to realize how many crises we manage on any given day, whether we're in leadership trying to communicate it or the practitioner trying to communicate it to the buyer and seller. So I could go about nine directions right now. But One going of them obviously is the pen that we both wear, the RPAC pen. I literally printed out, wrote down from our last legislative session here in Florida. These are the things that RPAC and our advocacy tackled. Listeners and viewers, if you don't know what RPAC means, that's a Realtors Political Action Committee. It's not Republican or Democrat. We are policy focused, not partisan focused. Carry on, Mike. And we're focused on homeownership and property rights, not social issues. That's just what we focus on. We protect realtor businesses as well. So here's a quick list. 
We did the Live Local Act, which is getting our workers living closer to where they work. It was $200 million for down payment assistance for hometown heroes. We banned rent control in the whole state. The Live Local Act was $811 million. And then we did an additional $1.5 billion over time. We did $1.1 billion for water quality because people come to Florida for the water, not the mountains. And I've lived here all my life. And I've watched these lakes change in my decades of living here and being on the water all the time. We do every July, Florida Realtors does a water cleanup event. This last year, we collected 18 tons of trash along the creeks, the rivers, the beaches, the lakes, the springs. And we tell people, just go out and pick up anything. And we put realtor branding on and we go out and we put it on social media. And so we get a ton of feedback there. Business rent tax, Florida is one of the few states that when a Home Depot comes into Florida and opens a new building, they get charged sales tax on that lease. Oh yeah, don't get me started. If I'm paying my lease fee as a tenant, I pay sales tax on my rent? Yep. Stupid. Oh, it's crazy. crazy. So we have worked over the last probably six years to get it reduced. And we're now making big headway in getting that reduced. The two big issues are condos because of the Champlain Towers collapse. We've got big condo concerns because now there's state law that says you have to fund your reserves because so many of these condos weren't funding their reserves because the owners retire, sell their big house, go get a condo down in Miami Beach or Jensen Beach or Indian Atlantic Beach. And it's a 30-year-old condo and they just want to pay cash and they want their condo fees to be 300, 600 a month. And now all of a sudden they're 900, 1500. Oh, and a special assessment for $22,000 or $10,000. So we're addressing that. And then the insurance thing. I mean, insurance is ridiculous in this state right now. It is a battle. It's canceled left and right. So the options yeah. are diminishing while costs are going up. It's the Wild West. Yeah. All right. I want to know more about the Live Local Act. I was over here writing it down because I need to hear more about that. What's the number of that legislation? Do you know? So this year was $811 million. No, no, no. What's the, what's the house number? Do you know the house bill number? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, I don't. Okay. I'll, I'll text look, it to you. I'll look up the Live Local Act. One of the things that I think the public doesn't know and that many members of the realtor world don't know is that if Florida does something really well, North Carolina loves to see that because we'll grab that text and we'll take it forward to our legislators and say, hey, this might be really beneficial to the citizens of North Carolina. And again, that's one of those things that you don't know in volunteer world until you're right in the heart of it, that there's no secret to any of this. But if something is really helpful to the issues you mentioned, property rights, to entrepreneurism, to taking care of our communities, we absolutely want to take great ideas and go forward with them. And North Carolina has in our state constitution, no rent control. So we put that out to pasture a long time ago. And we're grateful for that because that protected our property managers who as a group are often overlooked in the real estate space because they're in, let's just be honest, probably the hardest part of real estate space. You know what that's called, don't you? It's called R&D. You're welcome duplicate. Oh, I thought you meant property management, which is high No. (laughs) Who's that's a special space? Property managers, high five. We're grateful. High five. I don't want to do it. Okay. So Live Local Act, that's obviously something that's getting to be a bigger and bigger issue in the high cost areas because the people who provide the workforce in a high cost area often are not high income themselves. So talk to us about that act a little bit. So you and I travel a lot and you've got people that clean our rooms and our hotels. They serve our food. They valet our cars. And a lot of these people, it's not high school kids. These are people that have families. They have their own kids. And when you start talking to them, you find out that they commute 10, 15, 20, 30 miles to work. So the goal is, is to bring these people closer into where they work and put them closer into their community. And a lot of this is zoning issues. How do we do zone smaller homes? And you know, the term NIMBY, not in my backyard. So this is starting to have those conversations that it's not a bad deal to change the zoning across the street or four blocks down the road to where you can have higher density. And now you can build something that these people can afford. Um, and just to be clear, this is not the Florida legislature in Tallahassee telling Polk County what they have to do. It's offering a more way of, a broader array of options to the counties, correct? Yes, because we have what's called hometown rule or home rule. 
Because we get that pushback a lot in North Carolina. If Raleigh and the legislators for the state come up with any kind of an idea, boy, the local municipalities, they bow up really quickly. And our response is we're trying to provide a new set of options so that we can all figure out smart opportunities for the future. Stain and road. A lot of this happens between state and local. We're trying to give you another lane. There you go. The road's still there. We're just trying to give you another lane to go on. Great way to put it. See, that's like realtors telling their story. You're telling a legislative story. Yeah, I get it. If you are remotely awake, then you know that we are heading into some really tricky economic times. We have home buyers that have put the kibosh on buying. We have sellers who have found out suddenly their houses aren't dipped in 14 karat gold. And as a realtor, you are still trying to keep up with the business you have and trying to answer questions in the meantime, while also managing sky high fuel cost at the pump. Never fear because my new video course is coming out right now and it's called How to Dominate During a Recession. I've been a realtor for 22 years. My business went up every year during the Great Recession and it's all because of education. This course is four modules. There might even be some bonus content for you. The price is $1.99. I am delighted to bring this out as quickly as possible because friends, there's no time like the present to make sure our neighbors are stronger and we protect the American dream. Click on this link, www.dominatethisrecession.com, and I'll see you there. Now, back to this amazing content. Okay, so let's go back to, you had nine different angles you could go in, and we went down a, a legislative path. Tell us something that surprised you in your time as Florida Realtors president. What surprised me is how passionate the member is, the rank and file member is so incredibly passionate. They don't necessarily know what they know or they don't know what they don't know. But once they get a taste of this business, which I call it an opportunity business. I was a single dad for a couple of years. So this business allowed me to take my son to Little League, Cub Scouts, be there when he got out of school so I could keep him out of trouble. But yet also allowed me to make a decent living. You got a lot of single moms that they raised two, three kids like that. And this business is something that the harder you work and the smarter you work, the more money you make. When I did my installation last January, I had two ladies come up and speak about what home meant to them. And I'm going to mess this up a little bit, but I'm close. One lady was Cuban immigrants. Her dad came here in like 1970, one or two years later, bought a house, paid it off in two or three years, refinanced it like four or five times to send all of his kids to college. They ended up, he had paid off every time. Then his one daughter opened up a business, an auto body business. Her husband worked that. She went into real estate. And just like two, three years later, they sold the business for net like $3 million and sold that little house net like eight or $900,000. So that little investment pushed them forward. And that's when people understand when our members figure this out and now they get to go tell that story and go help that next person who doesn't have a clue. No one generationally has ever owned a home in their family. But now all of a sudden you teach them how to own a home and you teach them how to maintain it and teach them that you got to pay for a roof over your head. You really do. Even if it's the overpass, it costs you something to live on the street and it costs you your health to live on the street, but it always costs you something. And once people understand that, their passion just grows for this industry. And then once they learn that they can volunteer, whether it's in realtor world or it's at the food bank or somewhere in their community, that's where our members' passions just rise. And in Florida, we have 51 local boards. And we're such a unique state because we are 13 hours by car from Pensacola to Key West. And my wife and I figured out the other day, in the last 18 months, I have driven 44,000 miles just in my car. That doesn't include my hot rod. And if you want to, we can talk about cars and coffee. It doesn't include that. It doesn't include rental cars because I don't rent very often because I live in a rental car desert. So it's easier for me just to go get in my car and drive because by the time I go get a rental car and fuss and cuss with them, I could be an hour and a half down the road. Well, that's true. So I'd rather just roll. And I intentionally drive an older car that hundred tons of miles and I don't care about the miles. But that's how many miles I've driven the last just 18 months going back and forth. But it's something that I've had fun doing is meeting all the members and learning how passionate these members are once they understand what real estate does for a family, what well, homeownership you can, does. 
here at the very beginning of your leadership run up when you were in a contested race to become the president of Florida Realtors, because that was years ago, because it takes a minute to get there. You have always been steadfast in talking to and hearing from the workaday member who is not in leadership. They're not engaged with the organization. In fact, they only know we exist when they make their dues payment. So you have built more engagement within Florida Realtors over the last few years because of that singular focus. What do you think is the best way after going to all the local boards and reaching out by social media because you've done more social media as your leadership journey has grown by being on the phone, all the different ways you reached out. How do we get that member? The one imaginary member that I mentioned before, who's just roaming around Publix looking for a BOGO. How do we get them in the doors so that they know the legislative action is going on? They know that there's volunteer opportunities. They know there's other members who share their passion and their excitement. Because part of what I've learned is that sometimes that member who is on fire for real estate thinks they're the only one and they get very lonely simply because they haven't encountered the whole body that's doing things together. So how do we get them in the door, Mike? What do you think is the secret sauce? It's very simple. God gave us two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Use them proportionally. Go meet the members on their turf, not mine. Introduce yourself. And with you and I, when you walk to any local board in North Carolina, Yes, they know Lee Brown's coming, but a lot of members only hear the president's coming. It's the office. And I don't have the following that you do, but I walk into a lot of boards and they're like, oh, the president's going to be here. And I've just learned to walk in, introduce myself, how you doing, find out their name, and then just, how can I help you? And if you shut up, they start talking. And next thing you know, you know every issue in their life, you know, every issue in their community, on in their neighborhood, you have a feeling of what's going on. And anyone on this podcast already knows this. When you walk away from that conversation, they're going to say, my Lord, he was so interesting. I didn't say 10 words. I just listened to them. And when I go, like I'm going to Lakeland's across the street, I'm going to their installation today. I'll have a table up front. I will be at the back of the room talking to the rank and file members. What's your name? How long have you been a realtor? I'll just start talking to them. Because that's what they want to hear. And I've got more members that will call me. You know, you met me at, at the Space Coast Association of Realtors. No offense, but I met a lot of people and I don't remember you. And if I'm in my computer, I'll jump on Facebook and I'll look at them. Oh, yeah, I remember who that is. But you just got to talk to them. That's been probably the coolest thing is just listen to my members. And it's interesting. You made a comment. And for it, it's a five-year run. Secretary, treasurer, vice president, president, like president. And when I ran... At one time, there was five of us, and that's unusual. Typically, there's only two or three. There's five of us at one time. And I told my competition, I said, you guys will out-politic me. I'm not good at politics. None of you will outwork me. Ready, set, go. And I went to work. And when we got to our August meetings, which is when we vote, you've been to the Rose in Shingle Creek. It's a huge facility. But every day, I think it was four days in a row, I would get up about quarter to eight every morning, leave my room. I'd go to registration, down here's the expo, and it's like half a mile. And I would start and I would walk all the way down to the rotunda. I'd turn the corner, go down to the information desk, make a left, go to expo, and I would turn around. I did it 12 hours a day. I'm dead serious. I did it 12 hours a day. And I would just talk to the members. How you doing? My name's Mike. Will you vote for me? When I got tired, instead of going to my room and getting room service or going and getting in a the corner of a restaurant, I'd go get me lunch to go. I'd go to that rotunda. And I would sit where you had to turn to go down to our expo. There's a couch there. I would sit on it and eat my lunch. And people come by, what are you doing? I said, I'm eating my lunch. Well, I got a question. Sit down, let's talk. I just went and talked to the people. I pressed flesh, kissed babies, and asked for votes. I went old-fashioned grassroots. Isn't someone else running a campaign right now? There's lots of people running campaigns, some contested, some uncontested. But yes, I have. You I might are. be in a contested congressional primary, and it's what you said. It's not about talking to the powers that be. It's about talking to the people that you plan to represent. And that's what I think was so different about the way you've approached leadership. And we've seen this happen in organized real estate on all three levels. And if you are a consumer, you should know that the way real estate is set up, we have a local board we belong to which is usually where we get access to the multiple listing service, although some areas it's not, but we have educational things and 
we get together and we do good things in the community. Lots of reasons at your local board that you can be very impactful. And at the state level, we do legislative efforts. We have forms for the state. We work with the Real Estate Commission. And at the national level, the biggest work that we do is with our elected officials in D.C. But when you look at all three of those levels, one of the reasons that I think we have gotten into the corner we're in right now with all of this lawsuit territory is that our leaders have developed a very bad habit of only talking to each other. And I don't think it's malicious intent. I think it's just neglectful because we as humans are far more likely to want to go sit in the corner of the restaurant with our three besties and catch up with our besties instead of go put ourselves out and be vulnerable to the rest of the people we've never met. And because we've only talked to each other in leadership and have not heard from the everyday member, we've gotten disconnected. And that disconnect, I think, showed itself in the strategy that was used in the lawsuit defense. And of course, I'm Monday morning quarterback in here, but I'm right. So let's look at what the ways are we can make this better going forward. And that is for leadership to decentralize and go sit in the lobby with your sandwich, which frankly is also a good way to lose weight because I can never finish eating because people want to come make a picture and hug and ask a question, share a concern because the humans want access to each other. We were wired for that from day one. We want to connect other people. We want to have access. and. When leaders encourage that, it changes the dynamic completely. And so knowing that your campaign led to a different kind of year for Florida realtors, and you have built up a reputation now of being the guy who's not hanging out with the same four people in the corner, but you are out there at the pizza parties thanking your volunteers and you're out on the road, as you leave this role behind... Is there anything you wish you'd done that didn't happen that would have made this a more impactful year for the everyday average member who's still never met you? Nope. You've left it all on the table. I've left it all on the table, Lee. All of it? Is there not a lesson you wish you could leave behind for people that they don't know about yet? So I put a post up a couple of days ago and we're doing this in the middle of December. So I should be done. The last two weeks of the year, I'm done. Peace out. and. There's one more initiative, one more bylaw that I want looked at by the members. And just the way it's worked, I started at first the year and I've had obstacles to overcome. And I literally have called a special board of directors meeting. It'll be virtual for December 27th. And I've got a few members that are like, oh, that's family time. That's family time. But yet, and that's on our private social media page. But then I have members calling me and texting me saying, just have the meeting. We're busy. We're working. We will spend time with family between Christmas and New Year's, but let's do the work. And I want it done in 23 because this is all the committees that have looked at it. And so the, the other day, I put a post up because on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019, I had a heart attack and my bags were packed. I was leaving in a couple hours to go to Florida Realtors for our January meetings and be installed as secretary. And I had a heart attack. And there's a lot of things that happened that day that I believe were divine. And long story short, I got to the hospital in the right time. My widowmaker was 95% blocked. They did a stent. Doctor said, you're good. You have no damage. And they had no rooms. So at about 2.30 in the morning, I told my wife, I'm leaving. I'm not staying. If I don't have a room, I'm leaving. So I checked myself out and my doctor was livid. And she's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Florida Realtors. And she's like, no, you're not. I said, Beth, sweetheart, I signed up for a job. I'm doing this. So she puts me on a rope about that long. And she says, I'm going with you to Florida Realtors. And she doesn't normally go to these events. And she allowed me to do one event a day. The rest of the time I had to sit in my room. And so I got installed and everybody's like, what's he doing here? He just had a heart attack. But I got installed. I did my board meeting. And the reason I put that post up two days ago is I wanted the members in Florida to understand that I signed up for a job for five years, not four years, nine months, five years. And I'm doing this because I want the member to have an opportunity to look at what the proposal is. And Lee, I'm okay if they vote it down. There's no skin off my back. I'm good. But I just want the members to have a say so. And probably the bigger issue in this is the number of members that are reaching out to me privately saying, Mike, just do the meeting. We signed up for the year. The small boards are calling me saying, we have such little representation at Florida. 
that I'm not going to be a Florida Realtors director next year. I want to vote this year because I can't vote next year because we only have two votes and our president, president like gets them, you know, gets the seats. So I'm going to stay the course. We're going to do a director's meeting on the 27th. It'll be virtual. If there wants to be a lot of conversation, it may take an hour. If there's not, it could take seven minutes. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the motion. And like right now, because we have our own statewide version of what NAR has, which is the hub. So right now what I'm doing is every morning I put a post on it and it's about a 60 second read and I'm explaining the motion section by section in less than 60 seconds. I want to develop better directors. I want to develop better leaders. I want people to understand that there are rule books to leadership. It's called the bylaws, the policies, the budget, the strat plan, and it's called simple professionalism. Just do the right thing. Show up and go to work. And if you play by the rule book, the time you spend working in leadership will probably be less. It's when you get outside the rule book that someone's there like, we need to fix this. Well, why? Because you're outside of the rule book. And now you have to have that whole conversation to get us back within the rules. Whereas if we all stay in the rules from the first place, we'd have walked in and said, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Or eh, that's not a really good idea. Let's change it a little bit. Now it's a good idea. And it's also when you play within those rules, you can spot where the challenges are, where yes. do you make adaptations and fixes because nothing is perfect and nothing is set in stone. But if you aren't operating by those governing documents to start with, you don't get to spot the improvement areas, which is nope. the most important thing we get to do in our leadership journeys. And it's actually a direct correlation to working with buyers and sellers. How many agents have we known over the years who start a marketing campaign? And then they say, ah, you know, I'm just going to take a couple of months off. I had a couple of closings and they throw their hands up. Then they wonder where their business goes and they're right. constantly restarting. So they can't really get any momentum going. And the same thing happens in leadership when you start working on something. They, ah, I'm going to take a break. Let the next leadership team do it. But your opportunity to guide that change has ended. And the next person may have a different set of priorities or a different set of challenges. And they never get back to taking care of the issue at hand. So there's a total case here for keeping your foot on the accelerator instead of stop and go. I mean, nobody likes stop and go traffic, but we all like being on the interstate until you hit a wreck and then you're frustrated. And that's what happens when we get in the way of finishing a job. Frankly, you are the overturned track to trailer on the interstate if you're blocking a meeting that needs to just get done. Yeah. Can I talk about RPEC for a second, what we accomplished this year? I think you should. And just know we have a lot of viewers and listeners that are not realtors. So we can't make it any kind of an ask, but tell them something. No, no, no. They It'll be no ask. Tell so like Lee said earlier, every year, every state, every local association raises this money. And the reason we do this is so we can go out and have these conversations because money is what drives politics. It really does. So about eight years ago, I went to Texas for their realtor pack training. And at the time, Florida was about two and a half million dollars a year is what we raised. We had about 500 major investors. That's someone that invests a thousand dollars or more per year. And our participation was about 20% of our membership. So I started then having big conversations about how we changed the culture. Last year, we raised about 6.3 or 4 million. This year, 7.6. That's a big number, Lee. It's huge. Yep. Our major investors stayed consistent. This is the big number. Our participation went from 37 to 44%. We're a big state. A lot of our members don't engage. And to me, that's what's most important. But that is something which you're talking about. That started years ago. And it's like last year when I was president-elect, I went to Christina Pappas, who was our president. And I said, hey, can I start going around all the local boards and having conversations about RPAC? And she let me do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I took something off her plate. So I went to almost every local board, had a conversation. And one of the things I did this year, I did, I'm a car guy. I have an old Corvette. And I did something called, in the car world, it's called cars and coffee. You show up on a Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and for an hour and a half, two hours, you talk about cars, you drink coffee. That's all you do. It's simple. It's so simple to do. So we did 14, 15 events called cars and coffee driven by RPAC. So we would show up, we'd invite these local board members. And what showed up typically was car people who's never darkened the doors of the local board. One guy showed up with not one, not two, but three McLarens. 
One guy showed up with two Lamborghinis. Come to find out these guys have crazy money. Hang on, what's a McLaren sell for? Like how expensive a car is that? I think the cheapest one's about 600 grand. They easy to go over a million. That's the house money. So they bought- You know what an oil change is? Five they're, grand. They're driving around what could have bought an investment house. Whew. Well, so I've since gotten to know this guy and his investments are 10 to 20 million. Oh, so no big deal. So you have to put it in, in perspective. He buys commercial buildings and rehabs them and sells them. But he, no one had ever asked him. And I'm like, what's your old change? He's not five grand per car. And I'm like, you need to invest in RPAC. I need a thousand bucks. He's like, okay, I'll do it. No one asked him. Right. Because they didn't reach him in the way that he could be reached, which was different yeah. and show up for a lunch and learn about home inspections, which he's not going to come to. Nope. He's not going to come to it. He don't care. But he'll come to a car show. That's not his piece of real estate. Yeah. So it was once again, it was about meeting the member on their terms and in their space. Also, but it was also about changing the culture while you're meeting the member. Yeah. And this was not an overnight process. This involved you asking other people for an opportunity to lead a little earlier in a way that benefited them. Because obviously, when you are the president of an organization, your plate can get very over full. So for all of you out there that want to lead one day, why don't you reach out to the person in charge and see what you can take off their plate while you bring a return to them? Because you didn't just take something off Christina's plate. You brought a return to the organization, which made her look good. Yep. And sometimes it's not always about the recognition. It's about the job getting done. But when you think about changing that culture, there's also a lot of chatter in leadership spaces. Why would you ever run for office? Why would you ever want to do this? It's a limited amount of time. Nobody can get anything done. It's a mess. Everything's ruined. Everything's rotten. But you have to have the mindset that if you come in with a different perspective and a different attitude, other people might also come up with that better perspective and that great attitude to help carry the change forward. Because if we can change negatively, we can also change positively. Wouldn't you say that one of the gifts the members gave you was Gia Arvin as the president to come right behind you to carry on with the growth you've experienced and make it even better. It's so important who you serve with. Gia will be president next year. She's out of Gainesville. Go Gators. And we have created an incredible bond. And we don't agree on everything. I don't want to agree on everything, but we're not disagreeable. We treat each other respectfully and professionally. And we ride down the road and we have big conversations together. We talk early in the morning. We talk late at night. And it's all about, I'm here, she's here, let's have a conversation and both of us come to here or both of us come to here or both of us come right to the middle. But we just have these conversations and it allows us to work together a little bit more is what it does. But my number one job in leadership is to find my replacement. My job is to encourage someone else to come do this. And the two people that drafted me Voluntold me on the state level is, and I've told this story before. One of them is Mady DC. She asked me, she had a new initiative one year where all the different RPAC committees, none of them talked to each other. And so she wanted to put them all under one committee umbrella called Realtor Party Coordinating Committee. And she goes, I want you to chair it. I'm like, I'm not doing that. She said, I need someone that will be strong. And like five times, I'm like, maybe I'm not doing it. I will fight for what I believe in, but I don't like to fight. I really don't, but I will. So she finally talked me into it. I did it. And then a couple of years later, Sherry Meadows came to me and wanted to do a road rally for RPAC. And I thought, that's interesting. I'll do that one. Lee, that's the hardest doggone thing I've ever done in my life. And, and this isn't a negative comment, but Sherry Meadows was on me every day because Sherry looks at the details. Sherry pays attention. And during that period, every day I'm like, would you leave me alone? Just let me go to work. Stop. There was days I couldn't stand the lady. But one day, one event, we raised $125,000 on a one day event. And when we get done, she's like, we're going to do it again next year. I said, I'm not doing it. Y'all can do it. I'm not. It was too much work for the reward. But those two ladies gave me the chance to get out there and prove myself to other people that I could do the work. And to prove to myself that I could be a leader. And the last five years has been amazing. It's an amazing growth process I've been through. I've learned I'm not a great speaker, but I'm comfortable in front of a room. And I think I've got some stories to tell. I think I've got some leadership conversations that I can have. And coming over here this morning, I actually had a conversation with a local 
board president who's having problems. And I said, yeah, I'm planning on doing some speaking about leadership. And I told her my topic and the outline. And she's like, we're going to hire you. We need you to come talk. And I can come talk from an experienced perspective that this is the rule books. These are the guidelines. Stay in that box and you're fine. You're going to be good. It's that experience of the trenches that puts you in that role at the right time to serve all your members. And Mike, thank you so much for all you've done in leadership, not just in Florida, but beyond, and for also leading in a way that's honorable to your wife and to who you are. It's such an honor to call you a friend. I'm so glad we were presidents together. And I'm so glad that we get to go do new things because other people get to have a turn. Hooray! And we're going to say, go Knowles and put that nasty gator mug down. And poor Gia, being from that terrible town of Gainesville, she knows I'm going to have to say that Gainesville is south till you smell it and east till you step in it, because that's what we say in Tallahassee. But Mike, if somebody wants to reach out to you to find out more about your leadership training classes or more about the legislative efforts that you put forth at Florida Realtors, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Two things. My email is pretty simple. Mike McGraw Real Estate at gmail.com. Mike McGraw Real Estate at Gmail or call me 407 399 4823. 399 4823. They're not writing anything down. You know our people, they're listening okay. and they're thinking they're going to remember it. But I know realtors, you don't remember anything. It's all in the show notes for this episode, though. So after you stop your car or get off your treadmill, go to the show notes, reach out to Mike. I can tell you this he will call you back, he will text you back. And you will be better for having become his friend and listen to the lessons he has to share to make us all better. Mike, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And I guess I'll see you, I guess it'll probably be next year when I see you. Next year. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a good time. All right, guys. Say something nice about Mike, something you learned down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so we can see you next time. And we'll be back with more conversations on crazy shit in real estate. As always, I am so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you are a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one up the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you have some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.